enthused by great compassion, you taught a macro dharma to discuss the perverted views, to view the Buddha Dharma I view of all nations. And used by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma, the discussion of the body views, to you the Buddha Dharma, I pay And used by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma, the discussion of the body views, to you the Buddha Dharma, I pay your nation. Om ye dharma he tu prabhava, he tum te shantata gato yavadat, Esham chayo nirodha evam vadi mahashramana yeswava. All phenomena arise as causes, the causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well is taught by the Vedas here. I go for a rich until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sahaba. I am accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth. May I become a Buddha to the people of all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my heart to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of practice of living in the world, may I be known as the land of all sentences. <laughs> Arahat, Shariputra, and then who, who was being inspired and blessed by the Buddha to ask questions to Arahat Kishvara as to how should the how should the child or the children of the lineage, meaning how should the people who are who are very fortunate, uh, who have the vision to see the to see the, uh, the main path towards the regenerate happiness, how should these beings traverse along the path? So these questions are being raised, and then Arabhakteshvara responded, responded. As to finally is to wake up from the sleep of the ignorance. Just as when we are asleep, then we are we go through nightmare of the sleep. Say you are being tormented by a ghost, so much of fear is there, and particularly the ghost is on the verge to to arrest you or capture you. Then what's the mental state that you're going through? So this is because of the failure to see that this ghost dream is just a dream. So the moment you wake up from this sleep, then the fear comes to an end, the, night, the nightmare comes to an end. Likewise, Arabhavadishvara gave the response that finally all sentient beings who want to be freed from miseries, they should, they can possibly do that through waking up from the sleep of ignorance. Okay, so this is the scenario. The chapter which we are studying here, the chapter which we are studying here from the Guide to the Bodhisattva Swayfa, like the book that you have in your hand. Uh, the chapter is known as the chapter on meditation. Meditation. And um, usually we have a very fantasized version of understanding what meditation is constituted of. We think that meditation means something simply sit idly and then uh, peaceful. And so this is a very naive. There's a very naive understanding of meditation. It does not really have any connotation meditation, to, to be very honest. There's a very naive, fashionable understanding of meditation, whereas meditation has a connotation to familiarize yourself in a virtuous thought, to, familiar, to habituate and to familiarize yourself in a virtuous thought. And this meditation should have two things. One is the environment. Environment in which you should be meditating. Same, if you are environment of, uh, inv if you are in uh, environment of science, then, and if you are so interested in science, you can easily adapt, learn everything there in a science environment. Whereas if you are, the, if you are environment, if, if you are in the environment of, uh, what, 
drama, playing drama, the arts, fine arts, or drama like that, then we see that you are so interested in science and you go there, it's almost impossible. You have to create the environment yourself because the, the available environment is not for that purpose. So we need to know how to create a proper environment for your own mental um, habituation into the virtual city. One. Then the other part, after creating the environment, then the next part is, and more important, so environment is there, environment itself is of two kinds. One is the external environment, and the, the inner one, other, other one is internal environment. Internal environment is where, if your mind is obsessed with a uh, busy schedule, or oh, this responsibility, this responsibility, that, that responsibility, so form, then meditation is impossible. Likewise, so that is in the process of busy in thoughts. And the other one is busy in your obsession. Oh, I like this, I like that, and so forth. If there's an obsession to things, that could also be a great impediment for your meditation. So for proper meditation, finally meditation is not to imprison yourself and make yourself boring, no. It is to make you, it is to give yourself make yourself a genuinely happy person okay for that purpose uh, one is to create the external environment number two is to create the internal environment internal environment is of, is of two kinds to cut as much of the obsessions and number two is the thoughts engagement in your thoughts okay then the next one is what to meditate on what to meditate on so you have already created the environment. Now you need to know what you are going to meditate on. Finally, the meditation is for your own happiness. And the question is whether or not you are really happy. And then, if you're not really happy, then what are, what are the causes which are responsible for uh, you not getting those happinesses? Then finally, in a very sensible, in a very rational, very sensible, and particularly explore, exploring your own experiences, we see that it is a self-centered attitude and a self-grasping ignorance. Self-centered attitude, it is pretty more, pretty easier. Same, same, I am more important than others. In a loose sense, I am more important than others. The moment we, have, we go with this attitude in the community, there's always going to be a clash with the community. The community is bound to say that I'm also more important than you and you're going to say that I'm more important than you then how can two people be more important than other? It's not possible. So then naturally there's going to be clash. One. So that way we see that clash means you have a pain and other, others also have pain. Just forget about the others pain. Just think about your own pain. Even think about your own pain we see that that the moment you have this self-centered attitude, it is the one which attracts all your miseries and dissatisfactions. I am so important, so therefore I should have this, right? So all others around you, they may be, um, let's say, just a very simple example. All others around you may be thinking about maybe getting, say, uh, say 1,000 rupees per day, or say 500 rupees per day, and then you are getting, uh, say, 600 rupees per day. And then, and there's a job. And then, oh, this, I should be getting 1,000 rupees per day, but I'm getting just 500 rupees per day. So this is the problem there. And then you see all others, they're also getting 500 rupees per day. So this is not something, something um, which you only, which, or you, which, which you are alone are confronted with that situation is everyone else. The moment we have this self, self, self centered attitude, oh, I'm more important, I don't care about others. I'm still concerned about my own welfare, and I should be having more, more than that. The moment we have this, uh, this attitude, tell me, why do we need more money? Say so 1,000, why do we? Because I'll be happier. But then you're making, in the process of looking for this, you are destroying your happiness. I am, I want it, and you're not getting it. Right? And then you are not getting it. Still you are saying, I want to have it and I'm very special. 
then what don't happen is the is the joy in you or there's a pain in you there's a pain in you and this pain others who are not finding they're not having this pain this pain you are having extra because of this what self-centered attitude it doesn't mean that if there's a possibility for you get the job for like ten thousand dollars go for that it's fine there's nothing wrong in it at the same time at the same time if you see that if the motivation is that i am more important and then the re the reality that you're going to get the job is much is very narrow is very is very pain then on a such situation this self-centered attitude is one instead of giving you that job it attracts all your miseries in other words see how much we can say no to the self-centered attitude one another one is the self-grasping ignorance self-grasping ignorance to overcome the self-grasping ignorance so that is first of all let, let, let's, let us know how this self-grasping ignorance creates all our miseries how the self-grasping ignorance views or creates all our miseries self-grasping ignorance per se doesn't say that i'm more important than others here i'm trying to make a distinction between self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude if you know these two if if you know the distinction between these two so well then studying this text is such a fun, such a joy. And you will see that there's a tremendous value that I'm so fortunate to have encountered with this brilliant teaching of the Bodhisattva Shanti Deva. Okay. Now as for the self self-grasping ignorance. As for the self-grasping ignorance, uh, let us say the simple example that we can think of is the, the dream. Self grasp, as I said earlier, self grasping ignorance doesn't say that I'm more important than others. Self grasping ignorance is simply a distortion, distortion in its apprehension of the object. Say, you look at this, you look at this rosary, this simple rosary, you look at it, and you distort the reality of this rosary, and you see that, oh, this is a golden rosary, right? This is a golden rosary. So you are seeing, you are fabricating, or you are exaggerating. The reality of this rosary, which is a simple wooden rosary, and you exaggerate, you exaggerate on top of that, and think that this is a golden rosary. So this is your mind distorts, and you may not be interested in golden rosary. Or let's say to make it more, more simple, say, oh, this is a plastic rosary, right? Whether you say plastic rosary, whether you say golden rosary, whether you say <clears throat> diamond rosary, in all cases. One, one thing which is common to all these three is that the mind distorts the reality. What is the reality? This is that it is a wooden rosary. Then you distort this reality and, and saw it to be a plastic rosary, a cell plastic rosary. There is a distortion in the reality. So self grasping ignorance is distorting the reality of the cell. It distorts the reality of the cell. So say in dream. I say in dream you meet with the ghost and then there's so much of fear in you and it's asked if you are asked question why are you so afraid because I'm encountering with the ghost the moment you wake up from the ghost uh, from the sleep the moment you wake, wake up from the sleep the fear dissolves and then if you, if you somebody asks you okay in dream you are so afraid what made you be so afraid in the dream what is the answer because, because I took the dream to be the real. I took the dream ghost to be a real ghost. So when you see when you the dream ghost, is it a real ghost or this is a dream ghost? This is a dream ghost. Whereas if you instead of seeing the dream ghost as a dream ghost, and if you mistake it, if you distort the reality of this dream ghost, and give a false characterization, saying that this is a real ghost. You, so you here you have disrupted the reality you have distorted reality distortion of the reality of the ghost then the distortion of the reality of the mind the self if you see the, the dream ghost as a real ghost and the dream ghost is not a real ghost so how can you say that the dream ghost is not a real ghost anyone when you wake up when you wake up, you see that this is not a real ghost. What does it, what does, then what is that? If there is not a real ghost, what is that? What is that you have seen in a dream? 
distorted thinking. Uh, it is distorted thinking. So what did you see? It's a projection of... Exactly. It is distorted thinking. What you saw was simply the projection of your own mind. Yes. What you, your mind creates something. Your mind creates something. Okay, let's say, let's interact with this glass of water. Let's interact with this glass of water. So this glass of water is your object. And your mind is the subject. Your mind is interacting with this glass of water. Right? Now, likewise in the dream, you are interacting with the dream ghost. And the dream ghost is your object. And your mind is the subject. subject. So this dream ghost, when you wake up, this dream ghost, if I ask you when you wake up, this dream ghost, it exists from the dream ghost or it exists from your projection of your mind? What is your answer? Projection of your mind. Projection of your mind. This is, this is the meaning of how the dream ghost is coming from your subjective mind. It is not from the object, right? Whereas in your dream, there was so much fear in you because of seeing the dream ghost as not from the subject, it's from the object. The moment you see that the dream ghost is coming from the object, then there's so much fear coming in you. So likewise, all our problems, all our problems like the is like the fear in the dream, seeing the dream goes to be a real girl. Somehow they are rooted to the ignorance. Just as in the dream, the fear of seeing the dream ghost is a real ghost. This fear is the result of the distortion of the reality. You mistakenly thought that the dream ghost is a real ghost. And then so much fear comes in you. Likewise, all our problems are yeah, because of the distortion of the reality. While the reality is that everything is subjectively real, like how the dream comes into being. The dream, the dream ghost is coming from your mind, not from the ghost. Likewise, all phenomena that we encounter, where they come through the part of your own mind, nothing from the object. At the same time, when we when we interact with the world, we see them as objectively real. So that is what creates all a problem. It is for this reason that the Buddha said, O Mye Dharma Hetu Prabhava. All these phenomena, they arise from their respective causes. This phenomena of the miseries, the fears that we go through, that the results of our seeing things as objectively real. So what should we do? We should wake up from the sleep of ignorance. In the sleep, in the sleep, when you see the real ghost as the, the real. And when you likewise, at the moment, we are not in a conventional sleep, but we are in a sleep of ignorance. So what we are all seeing, what we are all experiencing, we are all experiencing the dream. And yet, we don't see them as dreamlike. And because of which, we go through all the problems. And um, it, is always, it is always very inspiring for me to hear about hear about the, the some real incidents or real anecdote of people after studying all these things seeing everything is dreamlike 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 and then when actually they go through the life experiences when they could go through some in job interviews when they go through some difficult times it was quite a several incident which was reported to me and it's all very inspiring so the moment they moment they feel a sense of being intimidated they feel themselves a little intimidated by the situation and then you, they think about the emptiness how everything's dream life why should i feel intimidated why should i be afraid this is all just dream life the moment they think about it and then immediately the fear dissolves so there are several incidents uh, reported to me by my friends uh, who study about this uh, how everything is dream like. So this is very inspiring to hear that. So likewise, what I'm saying is here is that self-grasping ignorance is a mind which distorts the reality of the self. How do you know this? We need to know what is, what is the reality of the self and how the distortion is taking place. The reality of self is that the self, instead of coming from the object, the dream goes, instead of, instead of being a real ghost, it is simply your mental fabrication. It is simply your mental creation. Likewise, even the self and everything, they come into being by dependence on our mental creation or mental projection. Yet, we fail to see that. We see everything as nothing to do with the mind. Everything is independent of the mind and everything is objectively real. So including the self. We see the self as objectively real. 
So that is known as objectification of the self or distortion, distorting the reality of the self to be objectively real while it is only subjectively real. Okay, so now we, yes, Mithal? Yeah, I just wanted to understand the subtle difference between the false categorization by the mind of the objects and objects, uh, things existing, but they are not objectively real. That means uh, I, I can see a subtlety here uh, that objects are there, but there is a false categorization. That means uh, that means mind is categorizing objects falsely. So there is, and then there is another thing that objects themselves don't objectively exist things. Uh, so that means the entire concept of objects as such we are nullifying. But in another case we are saying that objects are there but they are falsely categorized. That means uh, things are there. This is very important. So what you are saying is Make a distinction between objects and the objectification. Yes. So we need to make a very clear distinction between the two. The objects and the objectification of the objects. So the objects are there, objects are there, but the, the objects do not exist as objectified by the objectifying mind. Okay, this is a little technical, particularly those who you are not or those who are um, here, who came here. To learn how not to feel intimidated, <laughs> you may feel intimidated now. That oh, these are all very technical things. They all know everything, and then I don't know anything. Then you may feel intimidated. You come here in order to eliminate your feeling intimidated, and then now you become intimidated. So don't feel intimidated. So the people who are coming here, right, who ask all these questions, they once felt intimidated themselves several, maybe several months ago, several years ago. Right? And those of you who are newcomers, don't worry. Oh, they all went through the same thing as what I'm going through now. Right? I don't worry about it. Okay. One. Um, say, first, let, let us know this statement. Let us know this statement. And then slowly, slowly, it'll take time. Of course, it'll take time. It'll take time. People study for like 30 years. Reflect. Meditate on this subject for 30 years. Objects exist. But objects do not exist objectively, right? It seems to be it seems to be a dichotomous statement, mm -hmm. but this is an amazingly profound statement. Objects exist, but objects do not exist objectively. This is a very important statement. Okay, now without much ado, what is to be meditated? After knowing, after after knowing how to create the situation and the environment, what is to be meditated is to meditate on something which will eliminate what obstructs our happiness. And what obstructs our happiness is self-centered attitude and self-grasping ignorance. And what is to overcome the self-grasping ignorance is the wisdom of emptiness to see the self and all others as dream life. One. So that is dealt in with chapter in chapter 9 of this text. And then the other part is how to overcome the self-centered attitude. Self-centered attitude another, is another state within mind which obstructs our the greatest source of happiness. So we need to know how to overcome the self-centered attitude. What, what, what can potentially overcome the self-centered attitude is unconditional love. Or Bodhicitta. Bodhicitta, which cherishes others more than oneself. And some people who, who do not have the proper understanding of Bodhicitta, who do not have the proper understanding of Buddhism, they think that Buddhism is such a passive, such a self-denial philosophical religion. Because it only talks about suffering, 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 right? Then we all are reaching suffering. And still, they, it talks more about suffering, and it makes you more miserable, right? One, and then it, it always talks about uh, give up, give up your renounce, 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 <laughs> renunciation, renunciation, right? This is a very naive understanding of Buddhism. This is not the full picture of Buddhism. Buddhism is renounce what? Renounce your miseries, not renounce your happiness. 
renounce your miseries, right? Renounce your miseries and you will be happy, right? The happiness that which we think ha happiness, they are like the small children, small children thinking the football ground or the playground as the happiness. They don't see any deeper, profound happiness by following the, going to school, going to colleges, universities, then the PhD programs, they become professors, and so on and so forth. They don't see that. They only see the very immediate small thing as the source, as the greatest happiness. This is the indication of they being young children. Likewise, with ordinary beings, what we consider as happiness, this is like how the playground is seen as a source of happiness for the young children. And in fact, there is a very deeper, deeper happiness, much greater, more expansive, and more, um, the, uh, more profound happiness. So this happiness, we need to know how to get that. So to get that, one is, one is, what attracts all the miseries is the self-centered attitude. So how to get rid of this cause of the miseries? Self-centered attitude, how to get rid of that? That is by the practice of other church mind or bodhicitta or unconditional love. Okay. So for example, to make it very simple, say look at um, a saying in say 2015 years back in time, on this earth, Jesus Christ came on this earth. He is so well remembered, even now, so fondly by millions and billions of people. It is only for his quality of cherishing others. And today, we have his holiness, the Dalai Lama. Again, we see the same thing. He's just, he shows his face to people. And how many millions of people love him. The first time the people, many of the people, they're getting the, that intense joy which they had never experienced before, simply by seeing his face. Again, this for nothing else. It is only that for his having the quality of cherishing others more than himself. And then, back in time, like say 20 years ago or 50 years ago, there is this Nobel laureate, Mother Teresa. And who is this lady? Who is this nun? The same. He's, she's so famous. She's being loved by millions and billions. Not for anything. It is only for her love for the destitute and the needy people that is being loved by millions. Okay. Likewise, we need everyone. We need everyone to love, love us. We need every. We need everyone to be, uh, to be so feeling proud of your success. But no one is feeling proud of you. No one is loving you. Maybe maximum you are two parents, or you are some you know people. Beyond that. We don't see why we need everyone, why we wish everyone loves you, but it's the, the, it's the opposite. So that is all because we lack one quality which attracts others' attention, that is, other cherishing mind. And instead, we have been so rich in this poisonous mind, which only brings harm to ourselves, that is, self silent attitude. Now, how to eliminate this poisonous mind? How to eliminate this poisonous mind which attracts all miseries, all miseries to ourselves? That is by the practice of other church mind. And the best of the other church mind is technically referred to as bodhicitta. And this bodhicitta is what is taught, what is the, another very important subject which we are meditated on. So that is taught in chapter 8. Chapter 8. And now what we are doing, it has been uh, several months that we started this chapter 8 as a certificate course and then um, many of the attendees here um, you are already there from the beginning and some of you who are beginners here so why I've been going at length to ex explain all these things is to to just see how the how the newcomers they get some exposure to what we are doing here okay now, this chapter, particularly the second half of this chapter, is on how to cultivate this other church mind. Very wise way of making yourself happy. Extremely wise way of making yourself happy. Okay. So now, as a part of this practice, as a part of this practice, we reach to the, the, the stage of what is known as, what is known as, which the ordinary people may feel it just the opposite, contradictory. Meditate on, Meditate on envy, 
competition and jealousy, right? So we may see that, oh, what is this? I ended up in such a classroom where we are married to jealousy. This is to quell our jealousy. This is to crush a jealousy. Meditation whereby we married in jealousy to crush a jealousy. We meditate on envy to crush an envy. And then we meditate on our competition to crush our competitiveness. Okay. So what is that meditation in reality? So here we cherish ourselves and we simply deny, we simply reject others. So what is to be rejected and what is to be cherished? We see that there are two things. One is what is rejected? Others. All others we put in one group. And what is cherished? I. Keep one on the eye, the one, the eye on one side, and all others on the other side. And then we, we meaning I, I on this right hand side, reject the group on the B side, the left side. And I feel jealous of this group B. Group B meaning all others or individually others. Others when they are successful. And I feel very competitive when we are equal. I and others are equal. And then I feel very scornful. I feel I feel contemptuous of others when others are inferior with respect to you. So this is our natural reaction. Our, this is our natural reaction. And all these reactions say being jealous, being competitive, and being scornful. So all of these reactions are coming about driven by the self-centered attitude. The moment we crush these two attitudes, these three attitudes, jealousy, competitiveness, and scornful. When we crush these three, in a way, no, you are not crushing yourself. You make an impression that you are crushing yourself. It's such a self-denial thing. No, you are crushing your self-centered attitude. The moment you crush the self-centered attitude, the poison within your body, the poison within the body is taken out. The moment the poison within the body is taken out, you see that your body recuperates. Your body recovers so healthily, right? So healthily and so well. 